Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Kevin Power, an assistant professor here in the Faculty of Health Sciences, and welcome to the Neuroplasticity Lab. So when you think about movement, basically what we're talking about is a neuromuscular system. So when you go to do any type of movement, the brain sends a signal to the spinal cord, which then sends a signal out through the nerve to the muscle to tell it to contract. And what we're interested here at UOIT is really the cells within the spinal cord called motor neurons. And it's the motor neuron that sends the information to tell the muscle to contract. So the goal of the research program that we have here at the Neuroplasticity Lab is essentially to look at how those motor neurons in the spinal cord are regulated in terms of their excitability. Does their excitability get changed prior to a movement? How is it modulated during a movement and following a movement? And given that we also have an exercise neuroscience interest here at the lab, we're also interested in determining how increases or decreases in neuromuscular activity may influence the excitability of those spinal motor neurons. And what does that mean for movement? What we have here basically is a, is a coil attached to a stimulator. It's called a mag stim. And how this works is essentially you place this over the skull and you pass an electrical current through the coil which then activates the brain, which activates the muscle groups. And you can target the muscle group you want. So for example, we look at the biceps, so the arm flexors, the elbow flexors. So this looks at the cortex, to the spinal cord, out to the muscle, the excitability. And we can change the, the intensity of the stimulation. We can make it very small, we can make it very large. Uh, it isn't painful, which is important, but this is one of the techniques that we use. And then this equipment here, which looks very complicated, but in fact it isn't, is these are amplifiers. So we record the activity from the muscle. These amplifiers take that signal and make it bigger so we can analyze it. It's essentially how it works. And it's all done on the computer through the software programs. This is an upper body cycle ergometer. And essentially how this works is it's like running, but with your upper body. So someone will sit in front of this and simply pedal. And it's a movement, so we can look at how motor neuron excitability or how the cortex excitability changes before, during, and after a movement, such as this, such as this rhythmic movement. Uh, and we also use this to train individuals. And then we're going to look and see how the excitability of the nervous system changed in response to that training. Uh, another piece of equipment that we have that is extremely useful is this. This is a nerve stimulator. Well, this is actually used to stimulate the spinal cord itself. Uh, it's not invasive. Electrodes are placed on the back of the skull actually and it passes electrical current through the electrodes down the spinal cord to activate the motor neurons. And we also use this to stimulate nerves as it is a nerve stimulator and we place electrodes for example up on this portion of the brachial plexus known as Erb's point. So when you stimulate a nerve you'll get a muscle contraction and we can look to those two different techniques we can see how the spinal cord excitability changes and we can see how the nerve muscle synapse changes as well. So really those are the three main techniques and allows us to do a distributed approach to really probe the nervous system for changes in excitability. We can look at the cortex, the brain, we can look at the spinal cord where the motor neurons are which is really the area of interest in this lab. We can look at the nerve and we can look at the muscle itself. And as I mentioned, we look at those changes during movements and also following exercise endurance training.